Leadership can be described in many different ways. In the workplace, it's attained through inheritance or by merit. Most assume leadership is inherent in a title, such as supervisor, manager, president, etc. Some people are thrust into leadership roles during pivotal and trying times, such as Martin Luther King Jr. And some people assume the leadership role and seem reluctant to embrace it, such as our former president, George Bush. Merriam-Webster defines leadership as the office or position of leader, capacity to lead. Capacity to lead. That's quite interesting when you think about it. Does that mean that we're all capable of leading? Does that mean that only a few are capable of leading? Are we born leaders or can we learn the intangibles of what it takes to become a leader? Well, that's what I'm here to address today. Are leaders born with these tangible visions? Or can we be taught these virtuous intangibles and become what we all envision as leaders? Simon Sinek states, there are leaders and there are those who lead. His views on leadership are some of the finest I've ever heard and quite frankly to myself, very inspirational. They make sense and I think they translate to real life. And you can see it in the workplace, uh, you can see it at home, amongst friends. And that led me to deduce that, to me, there are two kinds of leadership. Effective leadership and efficient leadership. So let me take the next few moments to try to explain what I mean, this complexity of uh, these two leadership terms. The one example that I love to use for efficient leadership is the TV character of Michael Scott. Efficiency at its finest. Well, I shouldn't say finest, but efficient. Michael Scott of the TV show The Office. He always seems to keep that office running regardless of his naivety, his short-sightedness, um, shenanigans, and quite frankly his idiocy and lunacy. And who hasn't been exposed to a person like that before in their past or have to work for that person in the past? He manages to run a business and keep that office going, but his appreciativeness and awareness of others is quite often minimal and not very good. He has this grandiose perception of leadership of what it is to him and he openly displays this through his leadership style which quite frankly probably isn't the greatest. Now his job is to keep people working and he does that uh, with a very <laughs> uncanny ability at that. Now in contrast, let's look at Steve Jobs of Apple. He took a fledgling company that he started from basically nothing and he built it into one of the top computer companies in the world, if not the, to the top, some would argue that. He too was able to hold together a company and keep it running, just as the Michael Scott character did, but his style was pretty much the antithesis of this TV character, Michael Scott. Steve Jobs inspired people who worked for him and who bought his product. He got people to buy into the idea that you were buying more than just a computer from his company. How did he do it? Well, he was an effective leader, but how did he do it? Well, he was someone who got it. He understood people. He listened to his customers, listened to his employees, and you know what? He appreciated all of them. He incorporated them into his product and he convinced them that the company was more than just these computers. He convinced them that the product was about them, not about himself or his company. Efficient leaders, uh, in my opinion, are the product of those who assume the role and are content with how things are. They're not one to take a risk. They're not one to really question the status quo. They want to just make sure the wheels of that machine are oiled, well greased, and moving. They don't care, they don't take into account how those wheels are moving or how those wheels are doing or what those wheels need or what comprises those wheels. Again, they're just there to ensure that those wheels keep moving. They judge themselves and others on how efficiently the machine is running. 
effective leaders, well, they have the courage to take on difficult problems, difficult situations. And they embrace those situations too. Because they use them as a way to learn, as a way to grow. Effective leaders gain respect from others by doing the right thing when no one is looking. They have an immense amount of integrity. Effective, effective leaders inspire others to work towards the same goal that they're creating, that they're working for, by creating buy-in and showing others that the goal is bigger than themselves as individuals. They reveal to others that they themselves are real. That they're not just there to make sure the wheels are oiled. They're there because of who they are and they realize that the goal is beyond just the bottom line. Let me give you an efficient example and it's a personal example. Myself, my last job, I worked for the state of Ohio and we adjudicated social security disability claims. Um, it was a pretty dreary place to work because our job was just to make sure that numbers were met. Didn't matter about compassion, didn't matter about what you thought about that person or how you felt about that person or if you could be influenced by that person whose claim you were adjudicating. Your job was to make sure that claim got done as quickly as possible. Your boss's job was to make sure that you got your job done efficiently. Not effectively, but efficiently. How soon could you get that claim off of your desk, out the door, and adjudicated? Didn't matter what it took, didn't matter you know, how you were feeling, it just mattered the bottom line, getting that claim out the door. And as a result, they were able to use fear as a tool. It's quite an awful thing to come into work and to experience fear being used as a tool by your bosses, your leaders. And they used it pretty effectively too. Unfortunately, they used it so, they were very efficient in using it. Created, created quite a dismal, dreary place to work. 